Hello and welcome to a Team Moray Robotics video. This will be a design overview of my robot, Moray. So yeah, this is Moray and in this video I'm going to talk about its design and plans for it in the future. To start off, it's called Moray because it's named after my favorite animal, Moray Eels. Moray eels are just the coolest, cutest, and most terrifying animals you'll ever see. So that's why I named my robot and whole team after them. So this is an ant weight combat robot, which means it's one pound, which is the most common weight class, I think, in the world. It's the most popular one because it's very accessible. You can get kits for one pound combat robots, and it's not really that expensive overall. And it's not that hard to really build them. It's pretty easy once you learn the basics. Moray is my first custom combat robot, at least the first one that I intend to compete with. This was my first combat robot ever. This is Mega Wedge. It's just a Viper kit. So you can buy these off of FingertechRobotics.com. It's a very popular kit. So this, is, this isn't custom. I didn't really make it. I just put it together. So I used the Viper kit to learn the basics of all the wiring and everything. And then I used all of that knowledge to build a custom robot that I intend to compete with. And for the drive system, I'm using FingerTech Silver Spark motors. I forget exactly what the uh, gear ratio is. But I decided to choose those before hearing this. This fight really showcases the reliability of the FingerTech Silver Spark motors. You can always count on them to fail the moment anything touches them in a fight. But I've also heard a lot of good things about them and they haven't given me any issues yet. So hopefully it'll be fine. So the rest of the robot is custom. I have this upright which holds the weapon motor on. This is AR500 steel and it's bent there to uh, bolt into the bottom. I got this from Send Cut Send, so I made this model in CAD and then had it cut and I ordered it. It's the same with the top plate. This is polycarbonate or Lexan. This is the kind of stuff they use to make the walls of combat robot arenas. So it's fairly strong, but not super tough when it comes to taking direct hits. I really use this instead of some sort of metal to save weight. And then initially I was going to use a finger tech weapon that they sell, but that ended up being way too heavy. So I had this one made with Send Cut Send. This is a grade 5 titanium weapon bar, so it's a lot lighter than the previous steel weapon I got from Finger Tech. And that just mounts onto the motor with the Finger Tech weapon hub. And I just had to do mild modifications to that to get the blade to fit well. But I was really happy with the way the weapon turned out because it fit pretty well. The last design component I'll go over for this version of Moray is the chassis. So this is a TPU 3D printed chassis. TPU is a kind of 3D printer filament. So it's really flexible. So I can take the whole robot and just kind of bend it around and that's really good for taking hits and absorbing impact. I got this chassis 3D printed by Seth Schaefer at Jess Cuz Robotics. He has a really great YouTube channel with all sorts of robot combat related videos and there's a really great 3D printing service on his website which is JessCuzRobotics.com where you send in your files and some specifications and then he'll print it and you can order it. Uh, it didn't take much time at all, and I was pretty new to 3D printing, especially with TPU. So he helped me uh, work through the design to get it to the weight that I like. It was all just extremely helpful for someone who's new to 3D printing like me, so I highly recommend using Jess Cuz Robotics if you want to get something 3D printed for your robot. But yeah, I'm really happy with the way it turned out, but the whole thing was overweight. Overall, the whole robot, including the battery, is a little bit over two ounces overweight. So what I had to do is start cutting some holes in it, like in the bottom, and then the back, which I would tape up, and just removing a lot of weight like that. That's why I got a new blade, so it would be lighter. But still, even with all that, it's still going to be overweight. So currently, I'm in the process of ordering a new chassis which will reduce the weight pretty significantly 
as well as redesigning the upright to make it lighter and the top plate. So I should be able to get this within weight by the time I go to a competition. So let me talk about some of the specific ways that I'm going to get the weight down. So the first thing that I'm going to do is significantly reduce the weight of this upright. Right now I think it's at 1.8 ounces and I need to reduce about 2 ounces. So what I'm going to do is redesign this and the chassis so they fit together differently. First I'm going to redesign the upright where this bottom section right here, the green bit attached to the bottom of the chassis, isn't needed because it's going to bolt into the side here. So that'll completely get rid of this section and that'll save some weight. Also, I'm going to make it out of aluminum instead of steel, which will significantly bring the weight down. And I think with it bolting onto the side, there's less chance of it bending, which it definitely does right now, as you can see from the angle of this blade. Then the other major thing I'm going to do to reduce the weight is redesigning the chassis to make it a different shape. So let me get out the whiteboard to show you how that's gonna work. So this is what it's gonna look like. Wait, no, not that, not that. Here it is. So this is a basic diagram of Moray's chassis. Here are the wheels, and here's the front of the robot. So everything shaded in black is the walls of the robot, all the 3D printed material like that. Then here is the battery and the receiver. Those are really important for what I'm about to show you. So the way Moray works now is it has this upright bolting to the bottom here, like this. So you need all this space over here for that to be able to sit. But with my new plan of bolting the upright to the wall, it'll free up a lot of empty space here, and there was already empty space on the other side of the robot. So all this empty space is just wasting weight because the walls have to be longer, and all the material on the base of the robot is here when it really doesn't need to be. So what I'm gonna do for my redesigned chassis is basically just kind of do something like this, which will remove all that excess material that I no longer need by redesigning the upright. And I know for sure that the wall of the new chassis is going to be less material than the wall of the old one by using some geometry so the corner of the old chassis made a 90 degree angle, meaning that this removed section is a right triangle. And the sum of the two legs of any right triangle is always greater than the hypotenuse. So basically this wall here is definitely going to be less material than the previous two walls. And all of the material on the base of the robot will be gone, as well as these little kind of wheel guard things. I kind of just designed them to look cool, but they also doubled as wheel guards. So I will be removing a decent amount of material. Okay, so I've gone over all the components I've used. I've gone over my plans to reduce the weight. So now let's talk about what it's meant to do. The main focus is put on its weapon. So to anyone who's not very familiar with combat robotics, this is called a vertical spinner. It's basically just a large bar or sometimes it's a disc and it spins upward at really high speeds and this will allow it to tear through lots of materials and damage opponents so the way i've designed it it sticks out not as far as some robots but it sticks out definitely enough to do some serious damage and if you take my viper kit here you can see that it's a very good height for cutting into the chassis or potentially popping off the top plate. I designed these little fork mounts up here. I had more on, but it was really overweight, so I don't have any weight for the rest of the mounts or any forks. So I'll have to rely on driving skills a bit more to get to the sides and vulnerable places of opponents. So far, I've done one test with this new blade on it, and it went extremely well. The robot drove really well, the weapon spun for the whole two minutes that I tested it, and it ripped a Pepsi can in half. My lord! The only thing that wasn't ideal was the fact that the upright bent a little bit, but while testing previous versions of this robot, that also happened. So hopefully that'll be fixed with my new upright and chassis, but yeah, for now you can see it's at a pretty noticeable angle. This wouldn't be enough to really affect a fight or anything, but it's, it's not ideal. And you may have noticed some wires sticking out the back and all these 
holes here. This is just for testing because I'm not actually going to run this version of the robot at an event because it's become sort of a prototype. I'm going to get this new chassis which should hopefully fix all this stuff. So this is just for testing. Alright, so I think I've gone over everything I want to. Let's go and test this out. Alright, so here I am in the garage, and before I do a little bit of testing, let me weigh More with its battery on and everything. Yeah, 18.4 ounces, so I need to get rid of 2.4 ounces to get it within weight for the ant weight weight class. And that shouldn't be too hard with all the stuff I have planned. This is what I want to hit with More. So it's a metal water bottle, and it's pretty strong metal. Like, you can't really bend it. And let's see, it weighs 2.5 ounces. So I'm going to see how well More can tear this apart. The first version of this only had one layer, and the, it wasn't as tall, so what happened was More bounced up after hitting something and cut through it. So now this is on the top layer, and I have a thicker layer underneath, so it should be perfectly safe to test my robots in. I also have two latches to make sure it stays shut when things hit. I feel like it might not hold water anymore. All right, this test went extremely well. I tore it apart. I mean, look look at all this. I mean, I didn't know exactly what to expect from this because this is definitely stronger than a Pepsi can. But yeah, it went very well. You can see some really nice bits of damage like here on the bottom, which is the thickest part of the bottle. And then right there, I hit it there, and that's probably when the cap snapped into multiple pieces. That broke really easily, and then, if you look at this, this is always really cool to see. So this little bit of metal is where Moray's blade carved out a chunk, and you can see it's the exact same width as the blade. I always really love looking at that. And then you can see stuff like this, these little holes. The weapon fits very well in there. You can just see exactly how it carved it out. So yeah. And the robot held up mostly well, except I'm pretty sure this bent even more. So yeah, I think I'm done testing Moray's weapon until I get the new chassis and upright. But there is one thing that concerned me, and it's this bit here. It looks like it may have cut the tape, and that's the wire to my weapon ESC. So that was really close to being cut in half, so I'm really glad that that didn't happen. So yeah, like I said, I think I'm done testing Moray's weapon until I get the new parts, which should fix the bending. So yeah, overall, it went extremely well. I'm very pleased with Moray's performance, and I mean, it's definitely going to be really damaging when it competes. And currently, I'm registered to compete at Rabid in Richmond in July. 
Currently, the ant weight slots are all filled. There were only 16 slots, and I, I am one of those 16, so I should be able to compete as long as I can get the weight down. But if you have a plastic ant weight and you want to compete, there are unlimited slots in that weight class. So, yeah, it should be really fun. I'll do another video when I get the new chassis and new parts, so I'll see if it ends up being within weight. Hopefully it will be, but yeah, I'll keep you updated on its progress.